Let us look at how dharma kriya, dharmyaha kriya is in line with the modern positive psychological findings. Dharmyaha kriya includes realization of self and expression of the power of self, expression of the talent of the self for the well being of all. That is the essence of dharmyaha kriya. If we look at the positive psychology, the foundational theory, it also talks about self determination theory. Self determination theory also says that human beings have tendency and power to get the autonomy, they want to have control over their environment. They have another tendency to develop competency. We have had more discussion on this in the second or third session. So, human beings have urge to get autonomy, to develop competency and develop belongingness, to build groups, to make families, to build communities. All these are natural expressions of human nature. So, in the dharmya kriya as well, people actually realize their autonomy, their competence and their belongingness, the tendency to belongingness. Uh, with the family, society and community. Uh, the work of Elizabeth Dunn is very interesting in this regard. So, she has looked at the connection between money and happiness. Dunn and colleague have found that happiness and money are connected only to some extent. Beyond that extent, mo additional money does not give us happiness. Actually, it has small negative uh, connection with the happiness. So, when more money can give happiness, money can give happiness beyond the point, beyond the point where people can fulfill their basic requirements, money can give happiness only when they are able to use it for the altruistic purpose, when they are able to use it for the social cause. And when they get benefit and when they get happiness by uh, spending money for the social, co social cause is when they have a sense of connection for which they are spending money. So, there has to be some connection, there has to be a sense of connection, impact when they see the impact of their work, the positive impact of their work that increases the happiness. Then and third is choice, when they have choice of spending money for a particular purpose, for the particular project which they feel connected to. So, connection, impact and choice, these three things when they are there, then only additional money, additional beyond a point where it satisfies the basic needs, additional money can give happiness only when it is spent with the sense of connection, impact and choice. Uh, work of Bruce Hide is also very, very insightful about dharmyaha kriya. What it says and before we understand the uh, work of uh, Hide and colleagues, we need to understand this uh, a theory called set point theory. Set point theory is the concept or a theoretical proposition based on which at least 25, 30 years people build policies and the whole thinking about happiness was around this set point theory. What it says that people have a set point about their happiness. So, uh, people can be different in terms of their happiness, but what is the point of happiness for a person that remains almost the same. So, if something bad happens in life, they come down. Uh, to the happiness scale, but then after some time they come back to that set point. Similarly, if something great happens in their life, they their happiness increases for some time, but then after that their happiness 
level comes to the original level. So, there is a set point we cannot do much in terms of the policy formulation or some social interventions to enhance the level of happiness of the people. This proposition is seriously challenged by Bruce Hedy and his colleague. What they have done? They looked at the panel data in Germany uh, and this panel data is very extensively collected uh, at the time frame of 30 years. So, they looked at the 30 year time frame about people's satisfaction of life, their uh, life preferences, their uh, life choices. So, it is a very extensive survey and these 30,000 households are involved in this survey. So, instead of looking at year to year regression between life satisfaction, happiness and other factors, they clubbed the data for 5 years. So, they looked at the average of 5 years and what they found that over the years there, there were people whose happiness levels increased. So, that was the major blow to set point theory which was uh, about believing that people generally have one set point of their level of happiness. They found that there are quite a few people whose happiness is actually increasing very significantly in the uh, when we combine the data in the chunk of 5 years. So, the next question was what was increasing? What were the factors behind increase and permanent increase in the happiness? And what they found was that economic goals were not explaining the increase in the happiness. There were some non-economic goals which were uh, increasing the, uh, which were which were making the permanent increase in the happiness. What was those non-economic goals? Those non-economic goals were social participation, engaging with some socially relevant projects, some social work. Uh, some uh, helping with some sections of society, commitment for some larger purpose, these things were associated with increase in the happiness level. Healthy lifestyle and transferability through parents, these are also two very important factors. People by changing health to the happy lifestyle and that also that includes inclusion of yogic practices in our day to day life that is found to be associated with the permanent increase in the happiness. One more finding is that the happiness of children is closely associated with the happiness of parents. So, uh, as a parents we can influence just by our personality we can influence the happiness level of the children just by the way we are. At the same time they found that children could change their level of happiness by their individual efforts. So, it is not only what is uh, received genetically or in the family, children can actually put in effort and enhance their level of happiness by social participation and healthy lifestyle. So, these are some of the interesting findings in the modern positive psychology and the general psychology which suggest that dhanyaha kriya that means working for the social cause larger purpose is deeply connected nimit what this sutra say is nimit of happiness nimit of harsh. Here I would like to have a little divergence from the ongoing lecture. We are discussing the different factors of well-being and we will continue to discuss, but I am tempted to pose this question to uh, uh, all those who are watching this video. If happiness is dependent on so many non-economic factors. So, by the way in the general panel data there was no significant difference in the happiness across different professions or across uh, different uh, uh, income groups. So, happiness is dependent and change in the happiness dependent a lot on the non-economic factors. And it is so much so that how we choose our life goal, how we choose and build our relationships, 
engaging our engagement with the social and natural environment this is connected with all these things then why our education system is predominantly focused on the economic factors and the core professional competencies which are mostly economic in nature why we do not give sufficient input on choosing the life goal more consciously choosing and building relationship in uh, in more effective ways and engaging with the social and natural environment this is just a, a divergence i hope there is a serious discussion on this aspect of education which is so deeply influential on the quality of life on the level of happiness we live at